My name is Dr. Larissa Bennis. I am one of the Avera Medical Group OBGYNs. Um, I deliver babies at the Brookings Health System and I also do both obstetric and gynecologic procedures here. My name is Dr. Tara Harzma. I am an OBGYN with Avera Medical Group. I deliver babies and do surgical procedures at Brookings Health System. I chose to become an OBGYN because I really enjoy women's health. I like the variety that comes um, along with being an OB and a gynecologist. Um, there's um, Part of our time is spent in the clinic, clinic where we're taking care of patients, helping them with chronic pelvic pain or other issues that, that females face. I also um, really enjoy delivering babies. It's always fun to be part of that special process in someone's life. And then we also get the variety of um, surgical procedures where we can do anything from a hysterectomy to a tubal ligation or a DNC. I enjoy being in, uh, involved in women's health care because we get to see patients through the entire uh, lifespan. We get to see patients when they're younger, we get to see patients during the reproductive age years, and then we get to follow those same patients um, through the later stages of life and into menopause. A hysterectomy is a surgical procedure where we remove the uterus. Um, there are approximately 600,000 uh, hysterectomies performed each year in the United States, and it's um, quoted that one in three women by the age of 60 will have had a hysterectomy. There are several women's health issues that women may need a hysterectomy, and those include uh, uterine fibroids, abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic pain, endometriosis, um, uterine prolapse, as well as gynecologic malignancies. I would say the kind of standard method of doing things is a, a vaginal approach, so there are not any incisions on the abdomen. Um, the uterus, cervix are removed vaginally. Um, there are also options for a, what would be an open abdominal hysterectomy. Um, that usually involves a fairly large incision on the abdomen, um, and the specimen is removed from the abdomen through that method. And I would say the most recent addition to all of those are the laparoscopic procedures, which can also be kind of the standard laparoscopic method, or there are options for robotic types of um, assistance with those procedures as well. The robotic hysterectomy was introduced in 1999. Um, the advantage over traditional laparoscopy is that the robot has um, a, the camera has a 10, time magn 10 times magnified view as well as um, 3D. So this helps us better visualize the pelvic anatomy and um, better perform the surgery. The surgical instruments with the um, robot are wristed, which give us 360 degree rotation, and this allows for more flexibility and precision of the surgical procedure. Some of the advantages for robotic procedures are that it can decrease the amount of time that a patient needs to stay in the hospital um, after the procedure is done. Um, and like Dr. Harzma was mentioning, the advantage of having some of the 3D imaging and the wristing of the instruments can give us um, more dexterity in more dexterity doing the uh, actual procedure itself, um, and especially in patients who have had prior abdominal procedures or have had a history of things like endometriosis that can cause additional adhesions, um, it gives us a little bit more flexibility to be able to do that procedure without having to do the larger abdominal open procedure. One of the other benefits to robotic procedures is that for patients who are overweight, um, it can give us an additional method to be able to do that hysterectomy without having to do a large abdominal incision. So with a traditional open abdominal hysterectomy, most women have to stay two nights in the hospital um, to meet all the criteria for discharge. Um, after a robotic hysterectomy, they typically only stay one night. However, we have had some patients that do go home the same day. The criteria that we're looking for would be um, able to go to the bathroom on your own, your pain is controlled, be able to ambulate without assistance, and tol tolerate a regular diet. So anytime we're looking at options for a hysterectomy, we have to take into consideration what, what the reason is behind um, all of that. Um, for some patients, there are other options for uh, medication management or less um, invasive types of procedures. Hysterectomy is considered to be a major surgical procedure, and so we always want patients to be aware of that going into it. Um, we usually talk about the risks and benefits associated with the procedure. I would say anytime we look at doing that, we usually say that there are risks for bleeding, risks for infection, risk for damage to bowel, bladder, or other nearby organs, and anytime we look at doing a surgical procedure, there is a risk of death. We consider those to be rare risks, but um, something that we need to make sure a patient is aware of. 
Um, when we're looking at doing a hysterectomy, we would also want the patient to be um, aware that there would not be a possibility of them be, being able to be pregnant after that. The most important thing um, anytime we're looking at doing a surgical procedure is that it is a very individualized patient decision and so we want to make sure that the patient is aware of all of their options and that they have discussed those options with their provider. So I would recommend having a hysterectomy here at Brookings Health with the Da Vinci Robotics Equipment um, because we have a new, brand new state-of-the-art facility. Um, they have done a lot of upgrades here at the hospital within the last uh, few years. Um, we've got a new set of patient recovery areas. Um, we also have a very highly trained surgical team um, that includes not only the um, nursing staff and the OR staff, but also, also the physicians as well. Um, both of us have done some additional specialized training to be able to use the robotics equipment. Um, and then here at the hospital, you're gonna be a name, not a number.